Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Anthony Kent. And I'm Derek Morris. We're excited that you can be with us today, whether you're a full-time pastor or a lay leader in your local congregation. We want to learn how to effectively communicate with other people. Exactly, Derek. Our topic today is right on that area, adult learning and ministry. It's a vital topic because Churches, ministry is all about growing, learning, educating. That's, I guess that's a significant part of it. How it's done, it's vitally important. You know, it's interesting because if a person is teaching children, she or he is taught principles for effective communication. But sometimes uh, when we're teaching adults, we're just expected to know what to do. Exactly. And that's what we're going to explore in today's program with our guests. I'm delighted to have our guests today, Gerald and Chantel Klingbeil, experts in this area. Well, I'm sure it's going to be very helpful. Thanks, Derek. We're glad that you've joined us as well. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our guests today, Gerald and Chantel Klingbeil. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Now, the topic that we want to explore with you today is adult learning and ministry. Mm -hmm. Now, Derek mentioned this when, in the introduction. Primary school teachers or elementary school teachers, they're taught how to teach children. But when it comes to adult education, it's more or less assumed mm -hmm. just how to do it. There's the acquiring of information, mm -hmm. the acquiring of knowledge, and then sharing it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we'd, we'd like to explore with you today. Mm -hmm. Just before we do that though, tell us a little about yourselves, what you do and what you've been doing. Gerald, would you like to go first? Sure, well, I'm, I'm a pastor, but I'm also a professor. I've been teaching for 15 years Old Testament, especially in different universities all around the world. Started off in South America, then Asia, and we now live here in the United States. And I'm the proud father of three wonderful girls. Congratulations. Yes. Chantel? Well, I'm married to this wonderful man, and I've had a chance to, to share with in, in our ministry, in his ministry over the years. Uh, at the moment, I'm working for the White Estate here at the General Conference. And I must say, it's really good to, to be in this sort of environment again, because I, I was working with the, a program here on Hope Channel. So it's good to see the cameras again. Terrific. Well, it's, it sounds like from your experience, from your ministry, mm -hmm. that you, you're well acquainted with adult learning and so forth. Now, we've got five vital points that we want to cover with this, this program. Would you like to lead us into the first point Gerald, would, would you like to lead us? Well, we started off with this. Actually, we were forced to start off with this when we were invited to, to do an evangelistic series in Argentina. Right. But it was, the pastor told us, don't just preach a normal series. This is a university in, environment. Try to do something that will engage the mind of more secular or, you know, people that have no religious background. So as we were studying, we realized that our teaching at the university level and also our ministry was always with adults. You know, we often teach in a way very modernist. You know, he says, here are the facts, one, two, three, four, five. Now make your choice, make your decision. And that may work at some times in some cultures with some people, but it doesn't always work. So, so we kind of began to read literature and we found five points that we wanted to emphasize. The first one is the need of the learner. Okay. So everybody, everyone from, of us, when we come to learn something new, we, we want to connect to it. We want to connect it to something that we already know. That helps us to, to, mm -hmm. to order and systematize inf information. So when I want to teach somebody a Bible truth, when I want to speak to somebody about the gospel, when I want to teach a seminar, I, I need to have this, keep this in mind. How can I connect it to the life of, you know, those who are listening in the audience? And probably 
if I could add to that, sure. a, a need, we, we need to perceive our need before we're willing to take on new information. We, we have so much information around us. Uh, I need to have a need for this particular thing that you're offering me mm. in order for me to be able to listen actively. Yeah, it, it sounds as though an, uh, being aware of the need is a great motivator to learn. Mm -hmm. Yes, well. yes. And it helps me, it, it, it's kind of the button that helps me to say, yeah, I, as you say, you know, I want to learn this. This makes sense for me. It, it helps me to, to understand my world better, maybe my life better. You know, mm. if, if we're talking mm -hmm. about existential and faith issues in my life. Yeah. Give us an example of where you, you really noticed this for the first time and almost seen the lights come on in somebody when they've, they're connecting the, the need to, to the learning. Have you got an example for us? Well, you can see when people aren't feeling a need. Mm -hmm. If you scan sometimes over a congregation during a sermon, you'll find a percentage of the people are sleeping. Uh, they obviously haven't connected their lives with what's on offer over there. Normally when you know, when you feel that need, the, the lights do go on, your eyes start shining, you become attentive, and it seems as if the time just flies by mm. because you're getting something you really want. Yeah. I, I noticed this in, in my classes, Bible classes, at you know, college, university level, and it was a class that um, education, uh, physical. physical education majors had to take. And they really into sports, not necessarily into big topics like salvation and Christology, you know, mm -hmm. something like this. Yeah. So I remember, you know, the first day in class, as they all pile into this classroom, they all pile towards the back. Oh dear. You know, that <laughs> yeah. kind of sends yeah. a message to the teacher. Yeah. The, I don't need this. Uh, this yeah. is not for me, how oh boy, I have to do it because it's in the, you know, in the plan, study plan. So as I used these principles and drew them out and, you know, we come to more practical ideas also later on, I noticed how they engaged, how they realized, whoa, this actually makes sense. Mm. It connects to my experience. And I think that's part of this first, you know, the needs of the, uh, of the adult learner. It needs to connect to my experience. It needs to be relevant. If it's not relevant... It's pointless. It's yeah. pointless. Yeah. So if we apply this in our preaching, in our teaching, in our Bible giving of Bible studies, we need to establish, the first point I think, we need to establish that this is something that will change completely you know, the... Meet people's needs. The, mm. the experience of, mm. of those who participate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let, let me press you a little further. Mm -hmm. Can you give us an example of, you know, a, a, a biblical message and connecting that with a specific need that you've seen in the community and, and just seeing how it, it works effectively when you've, you've seen the need and you can match that with a, a biblical truth or a biblical message? Well, well if I'm, if I'm thinking now quickly, mm -hmm. um, I think the one need is health. Right. You know, we, we did that also in that series that we started off with, you know, in that secular environment. We used actually uh, archaeology, you right. know, something that could be a little <laughs> bit dusty and, you know, boring. Mm -hmm. Bones and pot shirts and, and history and, and a history. long time ago. Yeah. And, and we connected it to real life and, you know, People were worried about health. Everybody is worried about health yeah. today. Yeah. You know, in whatever mm -hmm. culture, you know, health for living is important. And we suddenly, you know, as we looked at health concerns in ancient times, health realities in ancient times, we effortlessly could connect it to scripture. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. And what health actually means, well-being, the concept of shalom, of peace, which is not just the absence of war, but it's something that's inside of us that God gives us and blesses us also with good health. Wonderful, great example. Thanks. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with this topic, adult learning and ministry. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is adult learning and ministry. Our guests, Gerald and Chantelle Klingbeil. Now, in our earlier segment in the program, we looked at the importance of the needs of the adult learner. Chantelle, lead us into our second point. Well, the other important, we've been speaking about our, our learners, but we need to have a teacher. 
and the teacher needs to display certain characteristics. Right, so the characteristics of the teacher, mm -hmm. that's what we want to focus on. Okay, tell us about those. Well, it's extremely important. Uh, we normally think of a teacher as just being a container of knowledge. Uh, you must just have a PhD in this in order to be able to, to transmit mm -hmm. this. And while there's a certain degree of truth in, in the fact that you want someone who knows what they're talking about, you also want someone, especially when we're talking about the gospel, when we're talking about salvation, when we're talking about eternity, it calls for a special kind of person, mm -hmm. a, a real person. Yeah. And, and an adult learner uh, would like to see someone real. Right. What, what are some of the qualities that you define as real? Well, uh, let me give you a little example. I, I once saw uh, someone selling uh, crystals. Um, he was selling these crystals that were supposed to possess uh, qualities for, for all sorts of things in life, you know, for, for perfect relationships and all sorts of things. But he was sitting there on this little shabby table next to the road and, and selling these. And he had one that was supposed to be extremely good for wealth and prosperity. And he had several of those that he was selling. Okay. And, and somehow I couldn't buy into this because why was he sitting there next to the road if he possessed these crystals to give him wealth. Mm. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of the thing with the teacher as well. Uh, if I'm not convinced about what I'm teaching, how can I expect you to be convinced about it? It sounds like you're describing credibility here. Yes, yes. And, and it's exactly what Jesus is, how Jesus seems to describe his followers. Mm. The, the, the same model that he showed us as he was teaching, you know, he was authentic. He was not talking in two different languages, you know, depending on the audience. No, he was real. And I think that's, the, that's the, something that we need to remember when we teach adults. They want to see real people. They don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it, as a pastor, as a teacher, I, will, I need to be able to say I was wrong. Mm please forgive me, or I, did, I spoke out of context, you know, out of turn there. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that goes a long way to create, you know, for these characteristics of the teacher. He should create a way, an environment, I think, that will, that will be warm and accepting. Mm. That's, that's the result of, of this teacher that, you know, the, the quality of the teacher. So you're describing here a teacher who is uh, genuine, authentic, mm -hmm. honest, transparent, mm -hmm. and by the sounds of it, that has some kind of warm relationship with, with those that they're teaching. The teacher must care about not just his subject, mm -hmm. but also his audience. Yeah. Um, and, and people can feel quickly if, if you really care about them, if you're really interested, or if you're just trying to sell them mm. something. Yeah. Well, well, this connects actually right with the next issue, uh, the next point that we want to highlight, if, if I may. Tell us, tell us all about it. <laughs> if, if I may, because I think this real teacher will be able to create an environment that invites people to learn. Mm. Don't push us away. You know, this ideal learning environment. What is this? You know, that's a, that's a big word. What is this ideal learning environment? I think, I think it, it's, it's a way where people can feel at home. Mm -hmm. They at, can be themselves at ease. At at ease. ease. They can make mistakes. It's mm -hmm. open to make mistakes, to ask questions. There's no dumb question. Yes. And, and that seems to be the, the, exactly, again, what Jesus modeled. Mm. You know, people ask him lots of questions. Yeah. To some questions, you know, he strategically chose not to answer them. Yeah. Other questions, he told a story. You know, he, he was using another medium of communicating something. But I've, I think people felt extremely comfortable, comfortable in, in the presence of Jesus. Yeah. And it seems to be when, they were, when Jesus encountered people with a, a genuine need for learning, mm -hmm. he certainly didn't embarrass mm -hmm. people or humiliate them, no. but put them at ease mm -hmm. and in a situation where they, they could learn. Right. Yeah. And what often goes a long way is, is a bit of a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Um, it just breaks the ice. Uh, people can be, they can feel free to laugh at themselves. 
uh, the leader should also be the person who, who, who's, who's actually in charge should be ready to laugh at themselves as well. And there's no sin in making something fun. No. You, you know, no. learning should be a pleasure. That's exactly. actually the best way how we learn. Look at our children. Yeah. And I think most of these principles, you know, that, that you know, professionals have discovered in adult learning come actually from the learning of children because mm. learning is such a natural process and we often have made it into something so artificial mm -hmm. um, that it, it's become difficult yeah. or irrelevant or hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So just to recap, our mm -hmm. th three major points mm -hmm. so far, the needs of the adult learner, mm -hmm. what was our second one? The teacher. Teacher, the teacher, qualities. The, the, the you know, kind of profile of the teacher. The characteristics yes. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And our third one? The ideal environment. learning environment. environment. Yes. Exactly. Uh -huh. All right. So that's three. Uh -huh. We've got another two key points that we want to come back to. Stay right with us. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome back. Our topic today is adult learning and ministry. Our guests, Gerald and Chantel Klingbeil. Now we've covered three points so far in adult learning. Our fourth one is effective teaching methods. Who's going to unpack that one for us? Well, we could, uh, we could both unpack it. Yes, <laughs> you start. Uh, actually, the process of transmitting the information could come in so many different forms. And this is where it's fun for the teacher. It doesn't always have to be the same way. Mm, okay. And for even for adults, it's, it's, it's fun to do something fun, to do something creative, to do something different. But there are a couple of points that we could remember. Mm -hmm. But you seem okay. to be describing variation, not mm -hmm. just going down the, the same right. method each time. Well, very often when we think of effective teaching methods, we think PowerPoint, mm -hmm. you okay. know, or something that moves on the screen. Mm. And while I think that can be helpful, we, I think we have kind of vaccinated a generation of people <laughs> against PowerPoint because we put too much text there. We, you know, just follow reading it off the screen. It, it, it's not really it was doing its work. Exciting. It was exciting <laughs> whenever, 20 years ago, whenever um, yes. PowerPoint became available. But it's not only that. I think actually effective teaching methods involve also interaction between people. The, presenter mm -hmm. or the teacher or the preacher and his audience or her mm -hmm. audience. So it's in a way it's the ideal would be to create a learning envi environment that's small group based, mm -hmm. family based. Mm -hmm. We found this in, in this famous class that I taught there, you know, in Argentina with to my physical education majors. Um, they really enjoyed working in close teams together. They, they, mm. they knew how important teamwork is. Yeah. You know, in sports, you, you need to work as a, as a team. Mm. So they enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you seem to be describing a, a process too, where at times even one-on-one -on -one can be the ideal. Yes. And mm -hmm. certainly, biblically, Jesus modeled that too, yes. didn't he? With a Sometimes it's really good to have a look at the place. I'm thinking especially in big groups, um, and it might even be fun to, to change the environment and modify the environment a little. We've noticed a completely different atmosphere and interaction by taking out long pews mm. and putting in chairs and being able to make, make circles with the chairs and actually throwing in questions for discussion and, and have them come back out. It, it changes the dynamics quite a lot. So, so that's more for, for group lead learning and so forth as a discussion yes. base, yes. rather than addressing the back of somebody's head, yes. mm -hmm. you can actually have an open and, and clear dialogue. Yes, yeah. and uh, if we come back to that, that, that week that we did in, of seminars in Argentina, um, people f off the street walked into, you know, it looked interesting, you know, archaeology and the Bible and I, that was the title that we used. And they said, well, that's, you know. It sounded better in Spanish. It sounded <laughs> better in Spanish, you know, it does. And so, you know, we had a lot of university students walking in there and most of them, they are not religious bunch, you mm -hmm. know, they, but they were interested in of that. Of course. Maybe they had some, you know, they were interested in the topic because they studied archaeology or sociology or something like this. We decided, you know, 
within, as we presented each night, we had small groups activities, not all the time. But at times, and not in at the end, but interspersed in the presentation. They sometimes would talk to one another two minutes, and we would hear, you know, what did you think of that? They looked at an image, and they said, and we had a question, you know, addressing that image. And we noticed that people always sat at the same groups. In other words, there was something that was happening that there was a sense of no, community connecting, connecting yeah. that mm. happened. And they were mixed, you know, they were not just all visitors or guests there. They were mixed with the people that, you know, mm. belonged to that church family. So I, I think that there mm. was a wonderful teaching sounds, environment. And it sounds like you were taking a risk there instead of with the, the monologue, which is a safe, <laughs> regular way of transmitting information to put people in groups. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a risk. Did you find that it paid off? Very, Absolutely. very much. I mean, we, we, we didn't, you know, we didn't speak in monologues. We spoke actually dialogically. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we were standing there talking to one another, pulling each other's legs and, you know, making fun. Not literally. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Make, making fun of one another at times. Mm -hmm. um, Chantal is not a specialist in archaeology. No. But, right. And, you know, <laughs> and now and again we would have our fun there. But... People seem to enjoy that and that seemed to jump, you know, into the small groups. Excellent. Let's move on to our last point. And I think we've more or less led into this yes. with the, the teaching practice. Let's unpackage that in about a minute. We don't have long yes. to dance on this one. Well, people enjoy um, being able to draw on their experiences. Mm -hmm. And we found this as well. When I can connect my life experience to what's been taught, it hits home. So this works as well with the, with the small group. They also want to know where they're going. So we usually told them, that's what we want to do this evening. Come join us. Walk with us. They don't feel surprised. They don't feel jumped on. They, you know, it's, I think, something in our sermons, in our Bible studies, that's very, very helpful. Sounds like it's high on participation, which is mm -hmm. vital in this whole yes. adult learning. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Thanks so much, Chantel and Gerald. We really appreciate the insights that you've given us at Ministry in Motion today. And we'd like to thank you for joining us for this program of Ministry in Motion. We'd like to invite you to visit our website, ministryinmotion.tv. There you'll find an archive of all the programs that we've produced, and they're ready and available for you 24-7. Now, if you're a pastor, we have something very special we'd like to offer you. And I'm just leaning to the table now. We'd like to offer you Ministry Magazine. Ministry in Motion is, has a close relationship with this professional journal, which is for pastors. It's sent to um, dozens of countries around the world. Pastors have been blessed by this. If you'd like to be considered for a, a, a complimentary subscription to Ministry in Motion, Contact us on our website. Tell us about your church and your experience in ministry. Join us at ministryinmotion.tv on our website. But until next time, may God richly bless you in your ministry.